Hey, how y'all doing? It's Craig here again. What you're looking at right now is a Troy built four cycle, do not mix oil with gas, uh, string trimmer. Um, I'm not sure. I think this is the 25cc version. I'm not 100% sure. Um, anyway, it was given to me by a good friend of my son. His name's Tim Brown. Uh, Tim just recently moved out to Colorado and as he was cleaning out his belongings decided he didn't want to take this with him. Um, so he gave it to me knowing that I like to work on stuff like this. Couldn't tell me a whole lot about it or my son couldn't. Um, I have no idea what's wrong with it. It may start. I have no idea. Um, so we're just going to do a little investigation here, you know, see if it's got spark, see if it's got compression, and just give it a, a fast once over to see what we actually got. So let me reset the camera here. Get rid of my flashlight. Well, that's probably not a very good angle. kind of hard. That's not too awful bad. So the fuel lines, let's get rid of this um, breather cover. Foam filter looks pretty decent. Got a, a resident there. Uh, I just displaced him. He's, he's gone. Uh, that's kind of interesting. I've never seen that many, but this says 10 times on the primer bulb. And this really is not a primer bulb per se. It's a purge bulb. Uh, a lot of you probably know what I'm talking about. Some of you may not. Uh, this bulb actually purges the air out of the system. Draws gas from the tank through the carburetor into the primer bulb and then back to the tank and it purges I'll say probably 85 to 90 percent of the air out of it so you've got gas in the carburetor so it'll start. There is gas in it. Smells pretty decent. The duck bill valve Looks like it's in good shape. Um, I am not going to try to start it with that gas. I don't believe I've got a clear container down here, so I'm not even going to worry about dumping it out in something we can look at. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to dump that gas, and then we'll put some clean gas in it after a while. Be right back. Okay, got the gas dumped out of it. So I guess the first thing we should do Check and see if this thing's got some spark. That looks like a little 5 8. That's exactly what it is. That plug was not very tight at all. As a matter of fact, I probably could have turned it out with my fingers. Looks like it's been running good. It's got a little wetness to it. I don't know if that's some oil or if that's just some gas where somebody maybe tried to start it. Let me get my tester wire. I hope that I can find some place metal. Let me just try the carburetor here real fast. All this is is just a, a wire with a couple uh, clips on the end that I can clip on the, the metal piece of the block. And then just clip it around the, the plug. Let's clean that off a little bit. It's got some build up. Probably where it was loose and blown by.
Champion RD24 or RDZ4H is what it is. So now I don't need for the spark plug by doing it like this hopefully I've got a good ground right here I don't need for the spark plug to be touching any metal on the block or on the engine assembly because I've got a ground through this wire now so give it a pull here I don't know if you can see that but there is spark there good spark hang my wire back up so we'll put the plug back in put a little torque on that plug Again, you know, you don't need to go over bearing on it. You'll strip the threads, but make sure it's seated nice and tight. Because that didn't have the sealing O-ring or the sealing compression ring on it. That was just a, a taper seal. The top of the cylinder at the spark plugs has a taper, and the bottom of the plug has a taper. Basically like a valve in a four-cycle engine. They just seal metal to metal. Okay. Like I said, the I don't know if you can see that. Let me kind of get around here and zoom down. Even though the, the lines are somewhat pliable and flexible, feel kind of soft. The return line is not tight in the tank. Matter of fact, just trying to get it back in. It's just kind of breaking apart. So, I'll try to, to cut a little angle on there, get up above where it's, it's actually shrunk right there where it was through the tank. I'm going to replace these lines, but at this point, you can actually see how, well, no, you're not because I forgot to zoom it back out. But look at the inside of that line. See how the inside of that line is kind of like half plugged off? So I'm not even going to try to do anything. I'll shoot a little bit of gasoline down the barrel of the carburetor. This is what they call a barrel carburetor instead of a butterfly. And it's actually just got a barrel that rotates, opens up and closes. So I'll shoot a little bit of gas down in there. Pause this for a second, get some gas in my little box. Okay. Um, before we see if it'll fire. It does feel like it's got some compression. So we'll kind of turn this up a little bit now. Uh, get my little wood wedge. Keep it from turning back over. There we go. And what I do, I just take a little and um, draw me some gas up in it. And remember, as you're pouring this down in the bore of the carburetor, depress the throttle so that the gas gets down past the, the either the butterfly or in this case the barrel and gets down into the engine. Now one other thing that we ought to do is check the oil. Oh, press the start. Don't know. Oh, that's an electric starter. Huh, that's interesting. I didn't know these things come with electric starters. Shows a, a plug right there. Right here it says press to start and then it shows the female end of a plug. So 
Let's get my flashlight again. I guess I'll just leave it over here. I know you probably can't see it from my big head. I'm just trying to find out if there's some oil in it. Yeah, there's oil in it. Looked pretty clean. So, got that tightened back up. Let's set this gas over here so I don't knock it over and spill it. Okay, it's on. Spark plugs attached back up. Let's see if it'll pop. Well, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'll put just a little more gas in it. Because I thought it popped one time. Make sure you guys are in good focus here, yep. There she goes. She's going to run. Okay. Um, I'm not going to bore everybody with the analyticals of um, putting these fuel lines on. That's pretty much straightforward. Hopefully the carburetor isn't all gummed up. If I get these on, it won't start by priming it. And then we'll go ahead and we'll take the carburetor apart and see if we can't get that fixed up. So I'll get these fuel lines replaced and I'll be back. Okay, as you can see, I've got the fuel lines in place. Um, I wanted to do this on video just because of what I found. These lines are... This one here is not too awful bad, but they're just... You, you can break them, they're just spongy. This one here, see the build up in there? See how easy that broke? The fuel filter, the piece that went inside of the filter that the hose goes up on, now this hose here is kind of pliable. So, I'm gonna get my scissors. We'll cut this one open, but the the um, piece that goes up inside the filter that um, the hose attaches to the barb, it was actually plugged up. I had to clean it out, and it had this white stuff in it, which I believe is just residue from the ethanol and water mixed. So. This primer bulb looks like it's got some crap in it. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to remove the primer bulb before I pump any gas up through it. Just to see. What's inside of here. Matter of fact, Instead of doing that on the on the machine, let me zoom you back out here. Let's just take the carburetor off of it. It'll be a lot a lot easier to do it. And of course, that is a Torx, probably a 25. Yes, a T25. Pretty easy to get these things off. It's not hard. That bottom retaining bolt was actually pretty loose. I listen to my radio while I'm not recording anymore. If I'm recording, I turn my radio off. 
I had a, an issue with YouTube here about a month ago where they uh, basically blocked a video worldwide that I had posted because of one song. Uh, I even had a disclaimer at the very beginning of the video saying that the um, music that was heard in my video was free over the airwaves playing from a local radio station and um, that did not seem to matter to them. Try to get this off without tearing the gasket. Yeah. Okay. Gonna be a little contrary, so we'll resort to my best friend with gaskets. That's nothing more than just a single edge razor blade. I didn't tear it clear through, so what I'll do when I put this back together, I'm actually going to leave this on there just like it is, and I'll put some three bond on either side to, to help seal it up, and hopefully that'll be good enough to create it, to prevent it from having an air leak. Looks like the home of my the resident that was in there when we first took the air breather off. Okay, now we're to where we need to be to take this carburetor, the primer bulb off this carb. Let me try to get you all situated here. Okay, all four of the little tap screws need to come out of this particular cover. Some of them you only have to remove two of the little tap screws. I know y'all won't know this this person. Um, he was probably my best mentor when it comes to learning mechanics, especially automotive side mechanics. Uh, his name was Bill Wood. Actually, his, his real name was William Wood. We called him Bill. Um, he just passed away this past week. Um, kind of shook me up a little bit, only 74 years old, you know, 19 years older than I am. I can remember when I was um, in school, in, in mechanic school, I um, actually done a lot of work with Bill. Uh, let me back up just a little bit. He was the head Chevrolet mechanic for a, a Chevrolet dealership here in hometown uh, by the name of Bog Chevrolet. And um, he was with them for 37 years, the head Chevrolet mechanic. And um, he would do side work in the evenings. And um, he was a friend of the family to begin with. And um, he actually, I guess you would call, employed me. He, he actually paid me a little bit of money um, to come and clean parts and do some other work for him when I was in school. And even after I was out of school, um, <clears throat> continued to do some work. Uh, for several more years and um, one of the guys that, that we used to do work for before he become famous there was actually two guys uh, but one guy he had some pulling tractors at the time and um, we'd done a lot of engine work for him and um, 
he, um, in the midst of his pulling tractors, he, he um, actually built a, a car, a pulling car, uh, called the Warlord. It was a, an 80, I believe it was an 85 Corvette body on a, on a pulling tractor chassis. Uh, actually done a little bit of engine work in that vehicle for him. And um, now he is um, on to bigger and better things. He actually has a, a business just outside of the town where I live. Um, it's DPI, Danny Patrick Enterprises. And he is the owner of Samson, the Bigfoot truck. So I actually done work for Danny Patrick before he was famous. Um, in the midst of knowing Danny Patrick, way back in, in the early 80s, 83 I believe it might have been, I actually um, met a guy that was looking for Danny on a, on a nice fall evening when I was working at the local gas station. Uh, he stopped. I was in a motorhome, just a, a regular old, like a Class C motorhome uh, on a Ford chassis. Had a car transport trailer attached to the back of it with a blue pickup truck in the back of it. And he was looking for Danny Patrick. Wanted to know if I knew him. And I said, yeah, I know him well. And wanted to know if I knew where he lived. And I said, I know exactly where he lives. So I um, actually instructed this guy on how to get to Danny's house. And um, before this particular person left, he offered me a job. They were going to be doing some things. Uh, he explained to me what they were going to be doing. And at the time, I didn't think that uh, it was going to pan out to what it panned out to be today, so to say. Uh, he was trying to, I don't know if you'd call it organized, but he was trying to get some, some guys together that would take these trucks and they was going to go to like local fairs and local exhibitions and they just for exhibit only just for fun they was going to take these trucks and they was going to start crushing cars and running over them um, this guy that, that stopped at the gas station that evening uh, had a blue Ford pickup truck on his trailer now you all probably know who that is but if you don't his name was Bob Chandler um, I, I, <laughs> I wish I would have taken the job because Bob Chandler, if you don't know, is the owner of Bigfoot. Uh, so I actually knew Bob Chandler before Bigfoot was even famous. And if I would have had foresight and been able to go into the future and see what his little escapades was going to turn into, I would have definitely taken that job. Hindsight's 2020, you know, if, ands, and buts. Um, so here I sat working on four cycle weed eaters instead of working on monster trucks and possibly who knows what else. Uh, another, little, I'll, another little story I'll tell is again I was working at the gas station and this guy he'd stop in every few days and buy gas. He lived in a, in a little town that was probably about 35 miles from where I live right now and from where I worked. And to be honest I cannot remember his name but one summer afternoon he come through and uh, we knew each other by name at the time and I've, I've long forgot his but he asked he said he wouldn't be seeing me anymore um, he worked for uh, a company called pack car which actually in our area manufactures Kenworth um, semi tractors and um, he was in the offices worked in in the office building down there I don't know exactly what he done but he had quit his job with with pack car Kenworth and him and one of his buddies had went out and bought a, a power washer and mounted it on the back of a big truck and they were going to go around at time and pressure wash um, garbage trucks. Uh, again, if I would have known what that company would have morphed into, if I could have looked into the future and seen it, I would have more than likely, no, I know I would have jumped on that bandwagon. Um, if you don't know who I'm talking about, the, the company now is MPW, Mobile Power Wash, worldwide company. Um, you see them everywhere. Um, again, he, he offered me a job. 
um, basically before the, the company was even up on its feet, uh, going around, like I said, pressure washing these garbage trucks. And at the time, you know, only being you know, like 23, 24 years old, whatever it was I, I was at the time, uh, did not seem like a very promising job, uh, power washing garbage trucks. Like I said, if I would have known what this company was going to morph into back then, <laughs> uh, I would have definitely been on that bandwagon. Enough about me and my if, ands, and buts. Um, this is actually a really clean inside. Uh, I didn't find anything that I thought I was going to find. I thought I'd find a lot of buildup inside of here. Uh, the diaphragm is actually still really pliable. Uh, this is, I don't know if I want to try this or not. We'll, we'll give it a whirl here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go much further. I don't want to wind up cutting the diaphragm. And then not being able to start it. Yeah. There we go. I might have it going now. Just take your good old time. Make sure you watch your thumb and your fingers. You don't want it to slip and then cut yourself. Well, see right now it's it's starting to, to get tight. And I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to damage the diaphragm. I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going any further. So like I said, the diaphragm is pliable. I'm not even going to try to take the, the base off here to check the rest of it. We'll just put it back together and we'll see what happens. Put it on right. I kept all the tap screws in order as to how they come out. Uh, didn't know if there was going to be different sizes or, or what, but they was all the same, so it really would not have mattered. Just good and snug is all you need here. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to put a little three bond on here. I probably ought to let it set 24 hours before I try to start it, but as soon as we get this put together, I'm going to see if it won't at least fire. I had a little bit of setup stuff right on the top of it.
once I get it started, I will take it apart and um, put, get another gasket and put on there. All I'm doing here is just making sure that the pulse. So let's get the throttle cable hooked up here. Uh, contrary little burger. There we go. Get the top bolt ran through. Hopefully without, there we go. Get that bottom bolt ran through. Pull the fuel lines out from underneath the carburetor, air breather base there. Snug these up. Again, they don't need to be overly tight. Good and snug. Okay. Filters on the front one here. Comes into the pickup there. The back one is the return. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's how they come off. Uh, also, see, I just made a mistake here. I forgot to put my O-ring back on. How's come y'all let me do that? So, take this thing back apart now. Just to put an O-ring seal back in. It would have probably been okay at this point. No more than what I'm going to run it. But might as well do it right the first time. Make sure you're clean here. Throttle's hooked up. Good and snug, that's all. Okay, fuel lines are free. Let me um, readjust the camera here, and we'll come back and we'll put a little bit of gas in it. Now remember this is four cycle, so you do not have to put mixed gas in here, but at the present time that's all I have. Mixed gas in a four cycle won't hurt a thing, might make it smoke just a bit, but it actually help lubricate the piston and everything as long as you don't go too overboard. Could cause it to maybe file a plug, but again, it, I don't know how long it's been since this thing has ran, so a little extra oil in there is not going to hurt a thing. Pulling the gas up, pushing the gas back down, so I've got it hooked up right. So, should be ready to run. Let's go ahead and uh, put the air filter in. Put the air cover back on.
see what she'll do now. Chokes on. It's got a on off switch that is spring loaded so when you hit the stop that off of it it automatically goes back to run. So here we go. doesn't want to take fuel um, I don't know if this is the one that's got the small adjuster that's done in the barrel it does look like it looks like there is a small adjustment done in there for the high side I'm not sure if I've got a tool to fit that um, I'm going to have to do something right here because even if I do have a tool, that is actually inset back in a little bit. I don't think I'll be able to get into it. So let's see what she'll do right now without the breather on it or the air breather cover. didn't help it at all. Yeah, I'd say the carburetor is plugged up. down enough that the, the head on it, the string head is not turning now. I say that's good to go. The longer it runs, the better it runs. So it's had some build up in the carburetor. It's had some build up in the carburetor that evidently is dissolved away or when I plugged the intake up with my thumb it sucked it on out. There we go.
Got an issue here with the kill switch. Got to push it rather hard. It might have some oil on it even. So I'll have to tear into that. Well, Tim, there you go. It runs, buddy. Thanks for the weed eater. Um, don't know what I'll do with it. Uh, I got a, a Red Max over there that I use all the time. Maybe just let Brandon have this one. Okay. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of long. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, and I'll see everybody in the